Hi everyone. This video is going to be about informal fallacies, uh, section 3.3. All right, <clears throat> so number one here. The Daily News carried an article this morning about three local teenagers who were arrested on charges of drug possession. Teenagers these days ain't nothing but a bunch of junkies. This is a hasty generalization you hear these a lot about kids. Aristotle was talking about kids and how, you know, bad they were. Not bad per se, but like how they just weren't the same anymore. You know, what, like 2,300 years ago, you know, Plato and uh, Socrates is talking about it in some of the dialogues. Um, we hear the same things about kids. Kids, these, these millennials, which by the way, most of the time that people are saying millennials, they're actually mean post-millennials or whatever the next generation is. Um, but adults love to complain about kids and make huge generalizations about children. Um, and it's always cultural too, right? Um, they're not, most people who complain about kids in this country aren't talking about kids who are growing up in Liberia right now. And so whenever you hear comments like that kids these days have no respect or they're lazy or whatever else, um, the person, inevitably that's just a false statement. Um, there are millions of children in our country who don't get three proper meals a day, who live in extreme poverty. There are billions more children around the world who live in even worse poverty than ours. Um, there are billions of children around the world, kids who work their butts off to try to make a, a better life for themselves. And there are a lot of kids who are lazy just like there have always been throughout the history of all the ages. So anyway, I'll step off my soapbox. But whenever you hear somebody complain about kids, you can point those things out to them, whether or not they'll listen, probably not. They'll probably just continue to complain. Uh, but anyway, that's a hasty generalization. If a car breaks down on a freeway, passing mechanic is not obligated to render emergency road service. Thus, if a person suffers a heart attack, a passing physician, is not obligated to render emergency medical assistance. This is weak analogy. So these two, the comparison of these two acts is not relevant. And I don't know, my guess is it actually, that actually um, doctors are obligated to render uh, emergency medical assistance. You know, I was on a plane once and then uh, the person was like, is there a doctor here? You know, like a woman was like, I was like, I'm a doctor. And I was like, of philosophy. <laughs> I'm just joking. That didn't happen. And I wouldn't say that actually if it were a very serious situation. But I would probably say it in my head, I admit. Okay, number three. There must be something to psychical research. Three famous physicists, Oliver Lodge, dot, 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 took it seriously. I don't really know what psychical research is. I think it was like an, an older term for what we might call psychology now, but um, it might be, but it was more along the lines of like, you know, reading minds and stuff like that. Um, I'd have to look it up. But my guess here is that this is just appeal to unqualified authority. Um, so if you're a physicist, you're not a psychologist. If you're a philosopher, you're not a politician. And so we need to like, um, who was that? Was that like a, like a wrestler or something who said, know your role, the rock, maybe Dwayne Johnson was amazing. By the way, that guy, man, he does everything. Doesn't he? That Dwayne Johnson. Um, but know your role, right? Know your lane, stay in your lane. That's the problem with, with most people. We love to like get outside of our lanes, right? People who have no, who've never even taken a class on economics, opened a book, on economics, read an article about economics, they'll sit around and like be like, well, the economy is blah, 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 right? And you're like, well, come on, man. Like, if, if we've never examined the things, we probably shouldn't talk about it. Uh, so remember that. Um, anyway, appeal to unqualified authority occurs when you appeal to somebody who's, a, who's not an authority on, as being an authority you know, like all these actors and people like that who want to like draw attention to all of these issues. Well, they're actors, right? They're not like political scientists or uh, economists or uh, 
naturalists. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't do research and learn about these things. And in fact, people like Bill Gates um, are now trying to tackle issues related to vaccinations and malaria. But Bill is out there doing the research, right? Um, and, and he's becoming an expert on those things because of the work that he's doing. So I don't want to say that all actors can't be um, experts on things, but in general, it's better to listen to uh, people who study in those fields than uh, those other people. Uh, the secretaries, number four, have asked us to provide lounge areas where they can do some stuff. But if we do that, or for coffee breaks, if we do that, then we'll have to give them, then they'll ask for spas and swimming pools, then it'll be racquetball courts, fitness centers, and expenditures for these facilities will drive us into bankruptcy. This is an example of a slippery slope. You hear this a lot, right? The one way you hear this is like, well, if we, or we used to hear it, probably still do. Well, if we allow gay people to get married, then what we'll have to do is we'll have to allow people to marry their pets. And then what we'll have to do is allow people to marry trees. And then we'll have to like allow people to like marry like their cars. And then people will be like in relationship. It'll just be like this crazy world, right? And that's not true at all. Um, that's just a simple fallacious slippery slope argument. Um, you know, people were arguing that, that gay uh, people should have the same rights. And that's simply it. And our society can recognize where to draw the lines. Um, I think people can actually maybe marry their pets, like, or at least like have maybe like a civil union. Like I've heard of people leaving all their money to their pets. Probably not a good idea. Um, seems like it could be used for, for better things. But anyway, that's a slippery slope. And whenever you hear that other argument, remember that too. Tell the person well, no, we don't have to allow people to marry their pets. Give me a break. What we're going for is just equality under the law that says uh, that you have certain rights as a citizen and who you want to have sex with um, or have a relationship with uh, shouldn't impact those inherent rights because it doesn't talk about it in the Constitution, right? All right. All uh, right. Number five, the accumulation of pressure in a society is similar to the buildup of, of pressure in a boiler. If the pressure in a boiler increases beyond a critical point, the boiler will explode. Thus, if a government represses its people beyond a certain point, the people will rise up in revolt. This is a weak analogy. Um, comparing a boiler to something as is, is, uh, complex as a government or a polis, a society, a state, uh, is not a good analogy. Now, that being said, uh, when a government does repress its people, often it does lead to revolution. Um, but there are other times where uh, people are extremely repressed and it doesn't lead to revolution or the revolution is, is squashed. Um, for example, North Korea right now um, would be in that, in that state. All right, number six. A few months after Governor Harrison finished his speech, a devastating earthquake struck southern Alaska. For the safety of the people up there, it's imperative that Governor Harrison make no more speeches. All right, <clears throat> this is false cause, often referred to as post hoc. So just because the, um, the earthquake, hit, earthquake hit after the speech doesn't mean that the speech caused the earthquake. Now that, this one is pretty easy to see, but you'll see a lot of these actually. Um, when people talk about poverty and its relationship to crime, when people talk about um, uh, poverty and its relationship to happiness or equity, or when people talk about things like gender and race and ethnicity and make um, claims about causality, uh, many times uh, those claims are often at the very least, uh, shaky. And so think about that uh, the next time you hear these things, or the next time, it's really hard though to get into the statistics if you're not like a master of statistics. But a lot of times people will make these causal claims and it's very, very difficult to link um, causality with, with, in general, it's difficult to link causality with an outcome, even in cases where it seems to be very clear. And David Hume has taught us that. 
Um, but anyway, be very, be very careful when people are making causal uh, claims, especially based on statistics and especially when they're not statistical masters. Like when you have politicians telling us certain things um, or even your professors, right? Like me, I don't really know statistics that well. So if I'm using statistics, you should say, Hey, Justin, going back, stay in your lane, know your role um, and not listen to me. All right, let's see. Uh, number seven. All right, no one has ever been able to prove the existence of extrasensory perception. Therefore, we must conclude that extrasensory, extrasensory perception is a myth. This is appeal to ignorance. So just because um, we can't prove something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Um, so for example, similar, I mean, it, it might be the case that all scientific evidence right now doesn't seem to appear to indicate that extrasensory perception exists. Um, so it might be highly likely that it doesn't, uh, but we can't definitively say that, at least at this point, especially since it does seem that some people have um, strange perceptions, to say the least, premonitions, things like that. Um, so related to this, you know, the classic example is, well, you can't prove God doesn't exist, so God exists. Um, again, not a good argument. Uh, just because you can't prove something doesn't exist doesn't mean that it does exist. For example, you can't prove that um, there isn't uh, an invisible unicorn in my stomach. Therefore, there is an invisible unicorn in my stomach. Um, no one would say that. So don't use that in the other case with God either. And I'm not saying that God doesn't exist or does exist. I'm just saying don't use that argument because it doesn't prove that God does exist. And you'll just use a fallacy, which you don't want to do. All right, number eight, Lester Brown, universally respected author of the yearly State of the World Report, has said that the destruction of tropical rainforest is one of the 10 most serious problems. Thus, it must be the case that this is indeed a very serious problem. I don't know what the state of the world report is, but let's assume that it's like, you know, a scientific publication on the state of the world and all the serious worldwide problems related to it. <clears throat> if this person is a universally respected author, you know, we could do some more background knowledge or uh, research on this person. Is he or she, or I guess he uh, probably wouldn't name your daughter Lester, but um, at least I hope he wouldn't. Um, <clears throat> The, that's like the boy named Sue, right? The, um, we could do some more background knowledge check on it. If we did it, then like, uh, and found out that they were, he was a professor, he studies these things. Uh, and then, then uh, we could say, yeah, well, uh, he, he might be right if he's been right in the past, if it's uh, in alignment with the, you know, the majority scientific opinion. Um, if, if it's in alignment with the way that societies are actually economically structuring themselves, <clears throat> like for example, people really, people don't deny climate change now. They just deny what's causing it. But there are definitely countries right now, like the Federated States of Micronesia who are, uh, essentially making plans to try to figure out how to keep their uh, people above water. Uh, and also like the, uh, the U S, um, uh, I forget the name of it, but essentially like uh, the group within the U.S. military that uh, builds all the bases and maintains them, uh, the Corps of Engineers, I think, um, they're already planning to build break walls and stuff at military bases higher as the sea levels rise. So anyway, <clears throat> all that to say, this is, this is not a fallacy so long as those things are the case. Finally, let's do number nine and we'll call it a day. George Clooney and Angel Angeli, I think they mean Angelina Jolie, maybe Angelia Jolie, I don't know. Uh, give large sums of money to charitable causes every year. It must be the case that all movie stars give large amounts of money to charity every year. <clears throat> this is a, another hasty generalization. Just because two people do it doesn't mean that a majority do it. I hope you found this useful. Um, 
and I hope that you will continue to not use fallacies and to uh, be able to identify them in the future when others use them to try to manipulate you.